Alright, what's up guys? This is Hector here with What The Heck Kind of question is that? And today's question is going to be uh, Doesn't Hebrews 6 verses 4 through 6 teach that we could lose our salvation? Um, well, let's take a look real quick And hopefully you can come to a conclusion Alright, now Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4 through 6 teaches us that It is impossible for those who were once enlightened Tasted of the heavenly gift, were partakers of the Holy Spirit, tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. It is impossible if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, seeing that they crucify again to themselves the Son of God, putting him to an open shame. That's what the scripture says, verses four through six. Let's look at the verse real quick, the cup, the those three verses, and break it down section by section. All right. First things first, the scripture says it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Now, the word enlightened means to shed light upon. Now, we know that Psalm 119 verse 105 says that the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. OK, so the word of God is light. All right. Second Corinthians chapter second Corinthians chapter four. Four, verse 4 says Satan blinds the minds of those that don't believe lest or so the glorious light of the gospel does not shine upon them all right so we know that the word of God is a lamp to our feet the word of God is a light to our path we know that the word of God is the light of the glory it has the light of the glorious gospel now you can possibly, it says, it's impossible for those who were once enlightened. In other words, they received the light, right, from the word of God. They were illuminated, according to uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32, right? Check it, check it, because I don't remember, check it, right? So uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32, talks about the illumination, all right? If it's not 32, it's 28, but it's one of those. But check the whole thing in context. How about that? All right? So we can have illumination from the word of God given to us. Now, it also says that it is impossible for those, we're going over the characteristics of these particular people. It says it's impossible for those who are enlightened by the word of God. They also tasted the heavenly gift. Now, I want to highlight that the word for tasted is the same word that was used when Jesus was walking to Golgotha. He had the crown of thorns on his head. They hit him over the head with the stick. They were making him carry his cross. As he was going up to Golgotha, um, he said that he was thirsty. This is in the book of Matthew chapter 27. He said that he was thirsty. As he said he was thirsty, someone ran. They got a sponge. They filled it with vinegar and gall or sour wine, and they gave it to him to drink. He tasted it and spat it out. Now, the word for Tasted the heavenly gift is the same Greek word for when Jesus tasted that sour wine. He didn't drink the sour wine. He tasted it and spit it out. All right. So we know that tasting has to do with trying something to see something, but not necessarily taking it all in. So a person can be enlightened from the word of God. They could also taste the heavenly gifts of God, but not necessarily experience salvation. All right. Here's another thing that we want to go over from verse 5. It says they not only tasted the heavenly gift, they also tasted the word of God. Now, being a partaker of the Holy Spirit, it is possible when you are partaker of the Holy Spirit, what it essentially means is that you're a partner in the work of the Holy Spirit. Scripture from uh, John chapter 16 states that the Holy Spirit has a particular ministry that he does in the world. The, the, the particular ministry that he has is he convicts the world of sin, he, convic he convinces the world of righteousness, and he convinces the world of judgment. That the prince of the world has to be judged, that Jesus is righteous, and that it is a sin, it is the ultimate sin, to reject Christ. That is the Holy Spirit's job in the world is possible that an unbeliever somebody that does not experience salvation can be partnered up with the Holy Spirit delivering that message and not necessarily having salvation themselves we know a lot of people that fit that criteria that do the work of God they might have said something that you know the Holy Spirit was speaking through their mouth but they were not necessarily saved in fact you could go all the way back to the Old Testament and look at um, I believe it is the King Saul who was busy trying to kill David the whole time, and as he went up to go and get him, the, 
the Holy Spirit fell upon him when he was around these pro and he started to prophesy. And folks was like, what? King Saul's a prophet now? Now nah, he's not a prophet now, but the Holy Spirit could still fall heavily upon him and use him in, in any kind of manner that he chooses. Now, it's impossible for somebody that was enlightened, somebody that partook of the Holy Spirit, that tasted the heavenly gift. It is impossible, even if they tasted the powers of the, wor the world to come. Now, if you look throughout the Gospels, you'll notice that there were people that walked with Jesus. Jesus had a large group of disciples. He had they, they, The scripture says there were 70. It, it was down to 12. Jesus had an inner circle, which was down to three. There were lots of people that used to walk around with Jesus. Okay, Now, it says that in John chapter 6... A lot of the dis now Jesus was uh, preaching a sermon. It's a great chapter because you can see Jesus is getting under their skin. He's teaching them like he's 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 speaking spiritual words to them. He's saying that if you uh, uh, eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have eternal life. The Jews were thinking on a physical level, and so what they were saying was, "Yo, this dude is nasty. Yeah, this guy, this guy's nasty. He's trying to tell us to commit cannibalism and eat his flesh and drink his blood. He nasty. That's what they were trying. That's what they thought." They thought that Jesus was disgusting because he was telling them to eat his flesh and drink his blood when he was speaking from a spiritual sense. As he kept saying, he said it so many times, it was, it was actually kind of funny. And when you get to John chapter 6, verse 66, interesting, interesting number, group of numbers there, 6 and then 66, right? It says the a lot of the disciples no longer walked with Jesus. So in John 6, 66, that's the scripture that says, Folks stopped walking with Jesus. Interesting. Now, um, here's the thing. It's possible for somebody to taste the word of God. It's possible for somebody to taste the powers of the world to come, but yet and still not experience salvation. Okay? Um, a great uh, case study or a great person to take into consideration is the Apostle Judas. Now, I love to utilize the Apostle Judas in this particular criteria because here is an individual, he was one of the chosen 12. He walked with the disciples. He was present during the Last Supper. And the interesting thing about being present at the Last Supper is that this is when Jesus said, hey, um, you know what? Uh, one of you guys, somebody's going to betray me, right? And the Apostles, they were like, well, well who is it? Who is it? Right? None of them actually said, it's Judas. You think so? It's Judas. I know. It's Judas. For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't been doing any miracles. He hasn't been doing anything. You know it's what? Judas. I think he's been stealing a little money, too. So, none of the disciples actually believe that Judas was the one, which inclines me to believe that when they were doing miracles, when they were doing all the things that they were doing, behaving as Christ's disciples and followers, no one suspected that the apostle Judas was the one that was actually a devil. Jesus said it from the jump. He said, I chose the 12 of y'all, yet one of y'all is a devil. So, this particular scripture in Hebrews that says it's impossible for those who were enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift or made partakers of the Holy Spirit, uh, tasted of the powers of the word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they fall away, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. This is a classic example of uh, an individual that appears to be saved, yet is not. They do everything like it's possible for people to behave like Christians, yet and still they don't. Check Matthew chapter 13. He speaks about the word of God being a seed being dropped on different types of people. And there is a group of people that it says the word of God goes into their heart. It doesn't quite take root. And what happens is something quickly pops up, but then he says the illustration that he's using is the plant pops up, the sun comes out, it burns the plant because it didn't have root. And so I believe that it's very possible for someone to look like they're born again, yet they are not. Okay, They might exhibit certain things. I personally believe that it's even possible for miracles to be done through them or through their hands. And honestly speaking, if a person experiences a, a miracle... The power is not really in the man that's doing the miracle. The power is coming from God himself. God can use any vessel he chooses to do a miracle. I honestly believe he generally will tend to use his people. But uh, God, God is the one that is the source of the miracle. It's not the person. It's not the false prophet, false teacher, or anything like that. So, does... Uh, he Corinthians does Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4 through 6 teach that you could lose your salvation I actually used to believe hey 
That's what it taught. But uh, the more I studied, the more I learned, I came to I came to the conclusion that you know what? Judas is that that guy. Judas is the guy. He is Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. And he did not have salvation. You can look into Judas's end. Um, also, I want you to take into consideration our other video that we have on whether I could lose my salvation. Check it out. See what you think about it. See what you think about this. Um, you know, there are lots of teachings on things like this. I definitely will recommend some heavyweights. R.C. Sproul, John MacArthur, John Piper. These are big dogs. Pastor A.R. Bernard. Big dogs. These guys are like the heavyweights of the spiritual realm. And as we look through time and we see there are heavyweights that um, taught biblical Christianity, these guys are today's heavyweights. Check them out. Look them up. Like the video. Subscribe. Leave something in the comments. It definitely helps us out. And also, uh, check out our other channel. Um, my kids do uh, like reviews of toys and stuff like that. So check that out, man. It's what the heck reviews uh, for them. Um, like them, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're going to see you on the next video. God bless, peace, and be a blessing to somebody else. All right?